you join me with the hunt key and AMD A10 from a previous build when we upgraded my uh, Zonotic server. But what is it doing here? Well, I am away from home for a week on holiday and I decided I'll bring this along to see if it's any good um, for daily tasks, browsing the web, you know, watching YouTube, that kind of thing. And coincidentally here, editing videos. Now, this very video you're watching was edited on this machine with its 8 gigs of RAM and uh, 18 quad core processor and yeah it actually managed the task. Not blazingly fast but usable. So here I'm applying a color auto correction on a video clip and it does take its time working through it but it gets there in the end. it's using two cores a lot and then the other two not so much. So originally um, this build was done because I had performance issues particularly on this map Soylent and as you can see it's back. With a lot of players on this very complex map you see flare ups in the packet loss um, which indicates it's not a comms issue but it's actually a server issue. Now if you look on the other side on Horizon 5 there's only one player that's got a bit of packet loss, not even significant, and that is because that player is from Namibia. So that's normal. But the game slows down to such a point where it becomes unplayable, just as we saw on the J1800. So why is this? Well, the board we're using with processor is uh, from the Bristol Ridge line and that's still using the old bulldozer excavator architecture where two cores shares one floating point unit and that map clearly needs a lot of floating point so after the last video I made with, with the Ryzen 7 I decided to use my old Ryzen 5 as my home server which is also the Zonotic server however I ran into issues with um, cooling um, it's already running the Wraith Stealth Cooler there and it ships with the Wraith Spire so um, I'm going to have to upgrade the cooler. Now that means getting it, getting it out of this case which is very difficult with those Wi-Fi antenna mounts at the back. But if you move as much things out of the case as possible, wiring and so on, you can wiggle the ball to the front and then if you get creative you might just be able to slip it out. Now, apart from fitting better cooling, the other thing I've done is I have changed the voltage on this processor. It is under voltage to 1 volt, down from 1.25, and also the clock is down from 3.7 GHz to 3.3. Um, but uh, better cooling would alleviate the problem even further. So, screwing around once more with the stealth cooler, this time I'm twisting it side to side. Um, in order not to suck the CPU out of the socket. Also this heat paste is not that old so it's unlikely to do that. Cleaning it with the wet wipe. It's a nice little side-by-side -side comparison of the Noctua versus the stock cooler. Uh, the Noctua is fitted with a beefier 25mm high fan. By default it comes with a 10mm fan. So let's hope that fits in this very small case. To get this cooler fitted, you uh, you need to mount it from behind. And there it is. Just need to plug in the fan and then see if it fits. And yes, it's touching the mesh of the case. In fact, I think it might be bulging a bit, but it's in there and it's working. So the performance on this Ryzen 5 versus the 18 is about three times better. If we look at these numbers from World Community Grid and it's running barely touching 30 watts max. 
which got me thinking this hand key case can do 60 watts so maybe in future I'm seeing another hand key build thanks for watching